Who's got one? That was easy. Did you watch the tape? Um, anything stick out? Well, the running game, second half, first half, the difference, I guess. Yeah, I mean, uh, the guys, yeah, we wore them out, I think. We, they, our guys strained. I thought in the end, um, you know, we uh, – we were able to lean on them and create some space, and the backs were starting to get a little bit more space, and we're able to run, uh, you know, hit it a little more aggressively. Um, it's one of those things where you, it's we're in a, in an environment that's very pro type, like the way Coach Stoops coaches, builds his teams, and um, you know, when you play complementary football, you have the ability to be patient and kind of wear a team out and, and approach it that way. It reminded me of calling a game in the NFL in that way where it's going to be a close game and a hostile environment. And if you take care of the ball, and eventually good things will happen if you stay with it. And so uh, I thought that that's kind of what happened and how it played out. Coach, how important were the tight ends just throughout the whole game, early on catching passes, later on in the game, blocking for the run game? Just talk about that group for us. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we known for – three months they were going to be important in that game um it just was one of those things that uh you know we were very generic in our opening game on how what we showed in a way to to allow that to play out in this game and the tight ends were going to be a big focus of it and um you know it's a, a team that's going to aggressively attack the line like they were going to do which is why the run game was very difficult early you're going to expose that in the play action game and the keeper game and that's really what we did we missed a couple of that could have been i mean we left 200 yards of offense on the field um, so we got to clean that up but it was cool to see those guys know their role know that they were going to be on the center stage and see them go execute and um, i'm really proud of the way they played they're, they're really good football players what do you like about those formations or take behind the backfield what does this like how does he suit it you know, we uh, we always had a plan to play him, and then it worked out where in that type of role, kind of like we did with Debo in San Francisco, um, you know, he's so elusive, uh, like a punt returner, so he sees seams, and that's very similar. Debo had very amazing skills to read combinations and not have to practice it a lot, and uh, we felt that way in fall camp, and just with T-Rob, I've always felt he has great vision, and he's explosive. Then we had the injuries at tailback, we needed another guy back there to probably that was experienced in a hostile environment that had played in those types of games to go, you know, support us in the run game. And he did a great job of that. Um, plus it opens up, you know, you put two tight ends on the field and, and a bunch of receivers, they don't know what, what you're going to do. Empty, run it. Um, we can pass protect with the tight ends. So, you know, next time it might be four receivers and one tight end. It could be three tight ends and no running backs. It, it could be every combination. and. If you're going to try and personnel, it's good luck. Which, what do you think about how they handled the, the environment there to come out so clean uh, with, with none of the pre-snap stuff? I was very impressed because, um, you know, we we spent a lot of time, I, I would say, in our walkthroughs and stuff. We had time with the guys in the summer preparing for this, and they were very mindful of, you know, what it was going to take with silent count. And, and we knew we didn't want to be in the gun a bunch, and we had to be – picky where we chose our spots you know and with a bunch of young players that hadn't played you know um you know flax is first time in a big sec environment at right tackle and i think the speed early was a lot you know and then all of a sudden he settles in you know and that's just part of playing um but i thought they did they were very composed the first drive you know it didn't go the way we wanted um we got in a third and long so we chose the screen just to probably was a conservative call on my part just because I didn't want to have something bad happen in that area on our first silent count on a big pass but um but I felt like they settled in after the first drive and we had a couple bad breaks and some mental mistakes but we cleaned that stuff up I think we're going to be a much more powerful and efficient offense and we can play in those environments. With all these in-game adjustments how challenging is it for you as OC to come in here and new place and be able to do that and why do you think you're so good at it? Uh, I wouldn't. I mean, I think it's a team effort. I think, um, you know, one of the great things about this offense is you, it, it, um, it has a lot of flexibility to in-game adjust. And, um, you know, I uh, to be quite honest with you, I knew personally that they would be attacking the run early and we'd have to make them punish them in the center of the field. And if their safety was going to step down to take that away, which is the only way you can if your backers are running through, we were going to go over the top. And so we waited, we felt the moment, and then we went over the top, and I think that loosened them up, and then we had a chance to attack something different. And once that happened, I think it 
just evolved into a more efficient, balanced attack. And we could have been much better even at what we did. So we got to tighten it up, but I like where we're headed. I like the guys we have. I like how hard they play. And um, I'm excited about the group and what they can be. Do you, you feel enjoy like that part of, of coaching? It's my favorite part. You know, I tell a lot of people, it's like, I'm in no hurry to be a head coach. My favorite thing in the world is coordinating. So uh, it's fun, it's the strategy of it, getting guys to buy in, seeing them go make it come alive. The, the euphoria after the game, it was probably as good a feeling as I've had coaching that I can remember. I mean, quite honestly, it's just different in the SEC than the NFL. And uh, it's just, it was a cool feeling. It really was a special feeling. I was really happy for coach, the situation. The players. It was uh, it was fun to be a part of. It's been a few times now. Do you see yourself as an NFL coach or a college coach? Or I, honestly, I was put on. I feel like I was put on this planet to teach, and it's just my subject is football, and um, and I love it, and I'm passionate about it. The game slowed down for me. I've been around some incredibly good mentors um, that taught me a lot, and um, and I'm applying that now. And, I just didn't enjoy it. Like I've had more fun coaching here in the last couple months than I can remember having ever. And so uh, I'm going to continue to do that. I work for a really good man and a really good program. And I'm going to tell you, I think we, we coach guys like they're pro players. And, uh, and I know they're in college, but I feel like we're going to be able to recruit who we want because they're going to want to play in the NFL and they're going to see that and that's going to make us better too. So I can't wait to be a part of this for a long time. As a coordinator, you talk about being patient and waiting on that play. How tough is that as a coordinator? Is that something you learn as experience? Hey, this may not be working now, but if we keep doing what we're doing, it's going to work in, in, a, in a game, I mean. Yeah, I would say those are things probably that they're either a feel that you've had, because I've called a lot of games over my career, just a smaller level, but then I learned a lot of things from Kyle Shanahan, quite honestly, and he's, he's as good as there is at this stuff. And, and you learn how to, when this happens, the next move, and you, you sequence things, and then you have your halftime adjustments planned out, and, and you kind of have a plan, and you're able to think a couple moves ahead. And um, and so we did that. I mean, these guys knew what plays we were going to open the second half with before we went into the game. Like, uh, I talked to Will, and they knew. And if we hadn't run into the ref, who knows what would have happened. You know, I mean, like, uh, <laughs> she was wide open. But um, but anyways, uh, yeah, that's just football, and that's the fun of it. And, uh, yeah, we got a long ways to go. But I feel like we're trending the right way, and we got the right people, and, and we got a chance to be pretty good. Rich Chauncey's made a couple of big catches the first few weeks. What are some of the things you like about him, and specifically what did you see on that rebound catch you made down there last week? You know, one of the things I love about Chauncey is uh, he was probably stacked at the bottom of the depth chart going into the summer and uh, never complained. Did his job, made play after play during camp. They probably got the best hands on the team. Um, he's got great feel as a player. He's gritty. Um, he'll block. He'll do the dirty work. Um, but that play he caught on third down, a lot of guys turned that down. And it was not an easy catch running full speed through that line. And uh, it's the same play I saw him make three or four times in uh, against our defense. And it's why we chose to put him in on that play in that moment in that game. Um, he earned that right, and he didn't let us down. And I think we got a lot of guys like that. We're about to unleash two uh, two young dudes that can run as fast as anyone in the country. And I can't wait to put them on the field against Youngstown. Wait till we see these two guys run. <laughs> I mean, it just gets better and better. So I'm excited about what we have. Looking at the film, uh, you see you left a lot of uh, yards on the field. A lot of, you know, well, any of those deep shots, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, we had uh, the sack we had uh, on the drive that killed the second drive. Bates was down the seam for a touchdown. And, um, you know, we had, an, we had a missed assignment, and it led to a sack. Um, and it happens. It, uh, it's unfortunate. But, but we'll learn from it. The players will learn from it. And then, um, and then yeah, we, uh, you know, we talked about the, the snap count, being careful in the gun. We had a, a play, I don't know if you guys noticed, where the, the jet motion almost ran into the snap. Well, the center wasn't looking back. Will was calling for the ball, and if it had timed out right, if you watch the tape, Barryon is running for a 60-yard touchdown wide open. Uh, my bet is it would have been a house call, and uh, that's football. You know, things don't always break your way, and you get lucky. You know, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't, and that's just that's what sometimes we call plays that work out that uh, weren't meant to be either. So, um, you know, it was one of those chances that you'd love to have back, but. That's the way it goes. I mean, we had the same thing happen in the opener. We had a bad snap to Will. He had to do a 360, and he couldn't throw it far enough down the field. I mean, and Darion was open. So um, that's ball, you know. But we'll get better. We'll tighten it up, and um, I think we got a chance to be pretty good. Okay, folks, when you get to uh, our other interviews.